Hello. Hello! Welcome to Bad at Board Games. He's bad at board games. My name's Brad Lake. And I'm Topher Ferguson. And we're bad at board games, so you don't have to be. Today we're going to be talking about... What are we going to be talking about today, Topher? Today we're talking about a roll and write called Longshot. It's good. Yes. Spoiler. It's, yeah, if you haven't seen it yet, it's on the hotness right now. Um, you'll be able to pick it up, potentially. Maybe you won't be able to pick it up, actually, around you. It's sold out a lot of places. Um, but this is a roll and write where you are at a horse race, you are bidding on horses, you are buying horses, you are playing all kinds of little mini games with concessions to be able to get money. You can up your pocket so that you can bid more on on uh, horses. You can do a little bit of other things that you can do to boost your horse um, as you go throughout the, the game itself. So fun little puzzle of what are you going to do to walk away with the most amount of money at the end of the game. Mm -hmm. And it looks really nice. I mean, it's $29, I think, at Barnes & Noble. Um, so you've got some nice little dry erase cards. You've got some dry erase, you know, boards for yourself. And I, you know, for what it is, it's it's a cute little game. So I, I, I have to give it I have to give it a pretty good rating on the on the appearance side, because I think it it achieves exactly what what it set out to do. You know, it's like you could be like, oh, that's kind of chintzy art. Well, it fits with the theme. It's like everything is kind of like, I mean, look at this horse. He's hilarious. <laughs> you know, all all of that works together and just, you know, like brings you this like lighthearted, fun, fun appearance and, and quality to the board. And, the, you know, the quality is nice. So I love the magnetic boxes. You know, more companies are doing that now. So I'm, I'm definitely a fan of, of the presentation that the, they've given you for the experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they don't make any hiding the fact that it's kind of cartoony mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. upbeat and fast paced um kind of fun little game yep yeah it's it, you know it's a little bit more than just typical roll and write as well so you know they they i think they've thought through this pretty well uh, for the most part you've got a little bit of an economic component in it you do start with a little bit of money and you've got to manage your money appropriately to go through the game um, there's some fun kind of engine building capabilities you can do um not so much building an engine, but you can work your horses or other horses to help pull other horses along as you go through. So depending on on the actions that you're taking based on the dice that you're rolling, you know, you could kind of improve your possibility of getting some of the horses that you're bidding on across that finish line a little bit faster. Um, so you have a little bit of that aspect there. There's a lot of Kind of just playing these little mini games. I know you call them mini games on a lot of these rolling rights. Um but your actions really can start to unlock other things and other abilities. So, you know, this is not a heavyweight game. This is not a game that's going to be full of deep, you know, tabletop mechanics, but it is not just, you know, uh, Yahtzee, a game I love that you're just rolling dice and writing down numbers. You know, you've got a lot of other little things going in it. And that economic component, I think, is something I like compared to some of the other rolling rights that our gaming group plays, mm -hmm. is that you have one more resource you're really managing. Yeah. And you get to play on everybody's turns so if you've seen the space space one or played space space one of the great things about that game is that you're always involved you're not waiting for 40 minutes for your turn to come back around then you get to do something right so every time you roll dice for the color you get to mark off something for that color and that's kind of the restriction the color like narrows you down into the things that you can do on your tableau but you're getting to do something on on everybody's turn so and then you got these little things that you know you can you can do it take that on somebody where you can make their horses go backwards or you can make your horse go forward at times so you know you have these different ways of of manipulating how you want to play the game and so so it makes it pretty fun when we were playing like the times i've played and you know, i'm sitting here i don't know why i'm sitting there like you know like i'm getting all, i feel like i'm playing or watching you know a horse race and i'm not i'm not a betting kind of person but this is just fun you know i'm like go one go five or you know like you know you want your horse to get through and then you want to buy that horse just at the right time before somebody else buys it and you know i you know i've had a good time when we're when we're playing <laughs> I, I may i may get into it a little bit more than everybody else but i really like it <laughs> <laughs> and somebody likes to take that action as well, especially against one person of the group, not the whole, but one person. Ashby? <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. sorry, Ashby. 
Um, yeah, yeah, that's who he always likes to take the take that action down on. No, um, you do, you do get into it. You get into the themes of games as we play, which mm-hmm. is which is really fun with this, mm-hmm. and especially a lighthearted game like this. It makes it good. Um, we we've played this with our gaming group, and I think one thing that I like about this is it plays up to eight people. So you do have the option to bring this to a group, no matter the size of that group, and it plays quick. But at the same time, you know, it is. It, you see some horses pulling ahead. And then all of a sudden, you know, you're rooting for the guy all the way in the very back because you've got something up your sleeve to be able to move them forward pretty quickly. And that's that's kind of a fun part to it. Mm-hmm. Um, the idea of everybody playing on everybody's turn, I think that helps to always have something going on and to feel like you can unlock these things on your tableau right. because it does take like the concessions. It, playing through that concession, my first game especially, I was like, this is worthless. Like, I can't get anything out of it. You do have to be strategic in how you're you're playing through those things, mm-hmm. but yeah, it's, yeah, it's a lot of fun. And it does have replayability, so you get sets of, of horses, and if you buy the horse, it gives you a special ability when you take a certain action, or when somebody else takes an action, or maybe you get a one-time money or something, right? Mm-hmm. So, I think there's like four or five different sets. This is the Barnes and Noble one, so it came with like one extra set of horses, but you know, that gives you this ability to be like, oh, it's not just the same game. The dice and who you're playing and the number of people you're going to be playing changes it from time to time. And then, you know, being able to change the horses that you're actually using in that race versus last time, be like, wait a minute, what was that ability? <laughs> well, and you also have starting cards that are going to be different. So, mm-hmm. you know, you're not just going to start out saying, I want to bet for that horse. You're actually going to get money and bets that you're going to start with that's going to change it up from one game to the next because you could have complete money put on you know horse number eight which is not going to get pulled along quite as much as horse number one is it, what are you going to do with that you know you could be yep. completely screwed over and your horse is going nowhere and then all of a sudden you buy horse number one that somebody else is going to get a lot of money for and then they're going to cause your horse to go backwards um somebody's done that <laughs> in, in games that we have played um but it's it it is it is a fun game you mm-hmm. know it's a lightweight plays pretty quick We've had I I've had a lot of fun playing it. I know you have too. You've enjoyed yep. it, kind of laughed through the whole thing. So, yep, yep, yep. it's good. So, what do you what do you like about it? Like, if if you're gonna pick like one thing or a couple things, what do you like about it? I hmm, one thing or a couple things. Well, one, I like the player count. I like that it plays up to eight people because that is something that can bring it to the table a little bit easier when you're in a group full of other people. Uh, another thing that I like is I, th- I think the buying of the horses, adding a complexity into it and kind of that race of when do you do that? Because you don't have much money. And I think that balance of spending the money in appropriate ways kind of stresses me out a little bit in terms of, you know, I'm that person that wants to play for an end game. Mm-hmm. But if I'm buying a horse, that's taking a lot of money out of what I could bet on something. And so, you know, which would I rather do? Do I want to bet and try to go for that long game? Do I want to buy a horse before somebody else does and then maybe become a target? I, I like that aspect of, mm-hmm. of it. Mm-hmm. I I think the thing, I'm big into games where everybody gets to continue to play. So I think that's what I like the most. I've talked about this replacing Super Mega Lucky Box because it doesn't chain the same, but you, you still get this feeling like, oh, I was able to get a tic-tac-toe and get the reward or i was able to get this pair which is going to give me five dollars or oh i'm i'm able to bet on this horse because i can tell it's going to win and i'm trying to bet on it right before it gets past the no bet line things like that um so you know it, it just gives me that feeling but i definitely like the fact that you know it can play up to eight it doesn't take long to play and everybody's involved so for me that's like that's my big like honestly it just you know i get Get all amped up about that. Yeah. So, what do I not like about it? That's a good question. I, hmm. What don't I like about it? That I don't win all the time? <laughs> well, you're used to that. I mean, come on, you're bad at board games. Um, I, 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 I'm not sure. I don't think there's anything about this game that I don't like it. I, I'm assuming that it'll get samey. At some point, oh, most games do, right? You're not going to play 100 games of it and be like, oh, it's the greatest when I just finally got it that first week, right? So I expect this to have a shelf life 
and then maybe bring it out again, you know, a few months later with a with a group. So I would say it's probably going to be what I not going to like about it, but it's not a two hundred dollar game, right? I mean, for for how much you pay, and we'll get into that. But you know, I that's what do you what do you kind of not like about it? I think it's a little too short to be able to feel like I'm getting into it and really able to play mm -hmm. a lot. I think that's one of the things. Um, and not that I need a long game. You know, I like filler games. I like the short ones, but I feel like I can't play enough on my Tableau sometimes to make it feel like I'm efficient and worthwhile in playing the game. You know, one of that, is it worth it? I didn't, I didn't accomplish what I wanted type things. Um, but that's uniform. I think everybody's going to be in that same boat. So I don't think it's necessarily that bad of a thing, but that's one of my kind of negatives for it. Um, I could see it becoming a little bit of a monotonous play because of the theme. I'm not big into horse racing. Mm. And the newness of it and sitting down and playing it, it is a lot of fun. But I wonder if, like you said, it's got a shelf life to it. I wonder if that's going to be something that I'm going to enjoy going forward too much. Um, but it is fun. It's a cute little game. It, you know, For right now, I, I thoroughly enjoy it. I, I do think it out... Uh, performs you know some of the other rolling rights mm -hmm. that you know super mega lucky box is a big one that we enjoy um so i i definitely would much rather play this than that but yep um we're going to talk about something new as we go forward with these games um value for the experience you have right so you know, like i said this isn't a 200 dollars box this is a this was 30 dollars uh i know you you know ebay they're trying to already sell it for more than that and things so but this is probably a 30 to 40 dollar experience right and in the first 10 i've almost played it every day since i got it so i've played it seven times in the last 10 days bringing it out because because i liked it you know and i was excited when i finally found a place that had it so i could go and get it because it, it wasn't so easy to go out and get you can just get it off amazon can't go down to the local game store they didn't have it they did have it at barnes noble so i went and picked, picked it up but um that's so for me i would say we're going to rate these between like a one and a five and this is a new rating so we're kind of tweaking it and trying to figure out one we absolutely don't think it's worth it the value for what you pay and the experience you get and five it's absolutely worth the money and then three is probably about average right you know it's a you spent fifty dollars on a game you're going to play it five ten times and yeah it's probably worth that or you know maybe a little lighter so Take that for what it's worth. So I'm. I think I would say this is a, a four. Mm -hmm. Like I don't think this is like, per, you know, if this were fifteen dollars for this, this would be a five. But you know, at thirty to forty dollar range, probably where you're gonna have to pay to pick it up. I'd say this is for me. It would, I would value this at a four. What about you? I'm gonna say about the same. Yeah, yeah. it's it's definitely worth picking up. I, I do think it's worth the thirty dollars. Um, I think the quality maybe could be a little bit higher for that, or maybe the price could come down just a little bit to match, especially a lighter weight family marketed mm -hmm. roll and write game. You know, you could pick up some roll and writes that have a little bit more complexity for exactly the same price. And the quality of them is going to be a little bit higher as well. So, you know, for the price that what it is, you know, it, it's, it is worth it. I think it is worth it, but I think we could find some games similar, comparable, that would be a better quality or a better longevity in terms of gameplay. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm saying a four, you know, the pieces, like, these are nice. You know, it's just a simple little wooden piece with a, a silk screen on it, but but they are nice. They are silk screened. It's not just a cube that you're pushing around the board. Mm -hmm. um, the quality of the cards, you know, they're all meant to be written on, so you're not getting linen finish, but they are nice cards you know they they are thick enough they're going to hold up for a while of playing the markers actually are pretty nice too mm -hmm. so yeah so you do get some pretty good things uh with the actual game itself yep um so what's your rating out of, out of the bgg one through yeah. ten where mm -hmm. would you rank this i'm gonna say a six and a half yeah yeah play it but not gonna ask for it Probably, especially because two people in our gaming group have it. I don't need to pick it up. Well, but I mean, like, you're not going to ask for it to sit down and play. But you're happy well, to play it any time it comes out? Yes. Yes. I wouldn't want to design a game night around this game. Mm. But if we sit down and we play another game, you know, we sit down and play Terraforming Mars, and we've got an extra 15, 20 minutes, everybody's just kind of talking, hanging out. 
I would definitely jump into this and play it. No issue. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say for me, and this is new, and so you got the newness factor in it. I'm probably going to say it's more like for an eight. For me right now, it's an eight. Nice. I could probably see this like tapering off to a seven, but like, I like this. Like this is, you know, and so for me, it's, and then I like the fact that I can get people to play. So anytime I can get somebody to the table, you know, that not, not the gamers, but the, the kids and the family and the other people, it, I find that to be a win. And so for me, that's what this game is. And the fact that you can play up to eight and I haven't played it at eight, I'm, I'm excited to try to see how far you can push it and what, what kind of chaos that brings to the game. You know, I'm, I'm kind of landing at an eight. Yeah. So I, I think, you know, with, with the gameplays that we've had, you know, you and I have played this as a two player game mm -hmm. and we've played it as what five player with the gaming group. Yep. I definitely think playing it at the higher player count was better than the two player experience. Mm -hmm. Although with our two player experience, we had a lot more that we were doing because right. it, it is limited by, I think plays more than it's limited by number of players playing the same number of turns. Mm -hmm. um, so I definitely enjoyed it at the higher player counts. And I think you definitely have this as an advantage when it comes to your family, because your family likes this. Right. And that is huge. I haven't brought it to my family, but I don't have kids. So for you to be able to have a game that they are wanting to play as well, I mean, that's a, that's a huge advantage. Mm -hmm. um, and this, I think, is a good marketed to family game because it is going to be good for the kids to be able to play all the way up through, you know, adults of any age. So, mm -hmm. Well, we really appreciate you guys hanging out with us. And yeah, yeah. Let us know. Have you played this? Have you been able to pick it up? Do, do you want to? Have you never heard of it and are saying, what is that long shot game? You know, let us know, comment down below, subscribe to the channel. We would love to have you along for the ride. Um, talk about more games like this. Maybe we'll do some playthroughs of, of this game or some other ones. So we're glad you guys are here. Let us know what your thoughts are on long shot. And we're glad Tope is not sick anymore so we can have more of these games and I can sit and we can laugh together. <laughs> yes. And, and so I'm not dying at home sick. Yes. That, yes. Yeah, I mean, thanks for thinking of you. When I it comes you. to my house. I know. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Have a great night. Bye.